good afternoon, everybody. To be very honest, I am a bit lost because I feel everything has been said. Now we feel like saying, let's go and do it. <laughs> That's how I feel like doing that. But first of all, I want to thank the SRS and all these people of goodwill who are able to see this great need. I think you need some holiness, some spiritual power to see the real need and you have it and you have seen it. So I congratulate you for having that spiritual eye to see this need and say yes, I am not a helpless victim, I can do something about it in my own way. What I think is a wonderful way to begin rather than getting disappointed with all that is not right. So I congratulate you for that. When uh, Roshni asked me to speak about something about this topic, uh, she said I should speak about schools and institutions with regard to food waste. Uh, see, very, very interestingly, the thing that really immediately a story came back to me. By the way, I have lived among the poorest of the poor in Bihar, the Musahars and other Dalit group, an absolute poverty situation in their huts among them for more than 12 years. And believe me, I wanted to smell poverty, I wanted to taste poverty, I wanted to know a little more what it means to be hungry, what it means to be helpless, so that I can enter into their lives, not only with my head, but with my heart. So, uh, so one, one of my first experiences I like to share with you, it happened in Sikandarpur village in Kabul, a very extremely poor, miserable Musahar place. You know the Musahars, they are the, yeah, they are the poorest of the poor. The lady who lived next to the hut I lived, in fact I shared half of the hut, the other half she was living there. She was having labor pains. And this was the seventh delivery for her. She looked like about 30. But she had only one child with her. So I asked her, where are the other kids? Sab Margia. All are born. All dead due to malnutrition. No other sickness. So she was having a lot of struggle. And the whole day she was ill. And people were coming, crying and praying, all kinds of things. So I sat next to her and I asked, Didi, what is your problem? She took my hand. I will never forget your friends. Tears rolling down her eyes. She said, Didi, do din se khana nahi khaye hai. Now, she did not have the energy to deliver a child. Never in my life I heard anything like this. I went to my hut. I prepared this one chapati and a cup of tea. I brought and gave it to her. And she took it. Within 25 minutes, the baby was born. I am telling you, it hit me so hard for my life, I think, that even women, here is a woman who could not give, deliver a child because of, at 25 minutes, because I remember that, I, it was like a miracle happening. So this is very important for us to remember the impact of malnutrition, hunger, poverty. So this really, really turned me around in my own thinking of that. Yeah. I'm not, I'm going to jump over some things because I was not aware what would be the thing. So I have certain statistics, things I did not touch that. Uh, what I want to say that is that I have seen really friends, I have seen and I have held in my arms children who died only because of malnutrition and hunger, especially the Musar children and the Dalit children. I believe anything we talk about this topic, unless we are deeply touched by a compassion that moves us, that shakes us, it will remain wonderful thoughts and ideas. So are we going to allow ourselves to be touched by the cry of children like this? Am I really touched? by the cry of people who go hungry. Am I really touched by our mother earth bleeding because we plunder her? These two realities should move us 
into this world. So it's a very sobering thought that uh, millions of people in the world, especially our own country, produce far more than we need and yet we are facing realities like the one I spoke about. So where did we learn this culture of waste? I have been also all over the world. Yes, it is true, Americans waste. But I also have seen people like in Germany and other countries how conscientiously they are saving to reach the food to others. This also is happening. I like to quote our own Pope Francis. I think all of you are now familiar with him. Wonderful saying. He said, throwing away food is like stealing from the table of those who are poor and hungry. Very powerful words, friends. Very powerful. While he has been very strongly attacking the culture of waste, uh, overconsumption, waste. It is an expression of our higher moral and ethical values and our active concern for those who are deprived of the basic necessities of life and who are condemned to live in the peripheries of the society. I, I very strongly recommend that we connect to this saving food to saving life another person bringing joy into the life of the poor. This is very important. Um, I'm going through some of this very fast because we had this this morning. You see, being towards the end, we, we had... So, it, so then the question is this, with all the progress that India is making, why are we not able to provide enough food for everyone today? Why have we not mastered the art of saving food, sharing food, never wasting food, recycling it, preserving it? Maybe we have not been touched by the pain of hunger. We are, we are not allowing ourselves to be touched by the way our mother earth is plundered, resources are looted. Can we allow ourselves to be touched by that? Then we will. Then we will surely act. So I was challenging this young ones this morning. You are the future. Can you begin a new culture where no to wastage, no to hoarding will be your pattern of life? Um, as we already heard this morning, I am um, I, going over all this fast because there is no need. This was said very well this morning. I saw this picture in the paper just after Roshni invited me. I was shocked. I said, I must make a copy of that. This is one rally where they said they cooked for one lakh people. Only 3,000 turned up. It is from the newspaper. 3,000 people turned up. I mean, I could not sleep after seeing this. It's a mountain of food thrown away in Bangalore after the rally. So 97 people, 1000 people's food is there. So this is, so politicians, hotel people, everybody is doing this. And the, who, will, who will challenge this? Who will challenge this? So my whole challenge is, we have to begin to cultivate in our young people a new attitude and behavior change, a new culture that sees food, wastes are unethical, immoral and unacceptable. I would say we must see this as part of our religion or dharma, not as just some good work. It has to be part of our heart, our soul, our spiritual thirst. The school community and religious institutions can also become champions in initiating organized efforts to address the issue of food wastage and building up enough political will and public pressure to enact stringent rules to prevent all forms of food wastage. I don't think only government can do that. It has very beautifully this morning it was said, it has started from, from the houses, from the families, that every child is shocked when he or she sees food is wasted and she is taught to challenge the system. It's in your hands. We cannot talk and go because now they say this is old timers thinking like this. This has to be the new fruit, the new culture. Okay? 
So there is an urgent need to, uh, for a well-organized movement for the education and empowerment of children and staff in our schools and hostels and institutions in order to create this new culture of no wastage and a commitment to reusing, recycling and saving food for those who suffer from hunger. I connect it with the human beings, connect with the another human person. I think it gets on another form. When on the other side of my good deed is a human person coming alive. That is spirituality. That is religion. And that is really, really moral and ethical practice that we want to have. So this calls for a new attitude and behavioral change, a new culture that sees food wastage as unethical. So the question is now, can, can uh, so from childhood we must inculcate in our children a deep sensitivity about and a sharing, the spirit of sharing. What I have is gift. My life is gift. What I have is gift. No gift received is for myself. A gift is to be shared. A become gift. We become gift to others. This is, I feel when there is such a strong spiritual background to that, we are more encouraged to practice this. So, can we teach our children that to live, uh, to live by the motto, enough is enough. Yeah? Enough is enough. We will live by the dharma of sufficiency. Sufficient. This is enough for me. If I need only one chapati, that's enough. I don't have to have another one in my place. So a beautiful motto, enough is enough. So dharma of sufficiency. And this is really a fight against consumerism. Uh, I have now a few suggestions, uh, some of which I have seen in some of our schools abroad. Not much is being done in an Indian situation. Some things are there, but a few little things, nothing very new. But I definitely believe together we can find new ways. We don't have to only look for what is there. We have the capacity, we have the willpower and that passion. I was telling you need some fire in your heart that this is a need. Together we need to do something about it. Then you will see miracles happen. No? So one of the first things I have is Every school, canteen and hostel and institution must have a definite no food and water wastage policy and all the stakeholders must make personal and collective commitment to refrain from any kind of waste. So when you, even when a child is admitted to school or hostel, this is said already. We have this big policy in our school. Please sign this and we will follow that. So it's not by chance, it's by decision, a conscious effort. Um, another one is to do some waste auditing. It's necessary if you are to plan the management of food waste reduction and recycling in our schools. Many people don't even see how much food is wasted during the tiffin break. How much is, nobody has done an auditing. If you do that, perhaps we will be shocked enough to act. So much is wasted in our hostels, in our religious institutions, in our festivities. Yeah. So there are a lot of places where we can do food or the waste or anything. Then we need to put in place a system for assessing potential for diverting the food waste from our schools and canteens and institutions to quantify the amount of food waste generated at the individual and different levels so that we can recycle, reuse, these things. Then school will have to decide their own implementation. So I believe students and staff together must sit and sit together and reflect on this truth that we are responsible for wasting food, we are equally responsible for the well-being of those who are hungry and we are responsible for not waste any resource of our mother earth. So connect it together and plan for uh, saving food. I definitely believe with the parent teacher associations, the mothers clubs, all these, they themselves need to be conscientized. If they are touched, if the mothers are touched, the teachers are touched, they become instruments in handing over this to the children. Because today it's almost a style to throw away some food. So, because we have much at this so how do we teach that in the schools, 
in the family. It begins from the family. So I would say make use of the parent teacher association and the mother's club. So the, always link these practices with the person in need so that it's not in vacuum. Parents need to be educated, pay attention to the palatability of the food, the nutritious value of the food, as well as the correct amount that the child normally consumes, so that when they pack, heaven say, give the child what she or he likes and only as much as. So it begins at home. I have walked around even in Notre Dame compound. A lot of food extra. Acha nahi lagta hai. Acha nahi lagta hai. So, the mothers will have to see what acha lagta hai and eat them that. And only as much as they need. Another one, teach children at home and in the schools and hostels that nothing is left on the plate. Maybe we have to have a system in the hostel, hostels and all, a tasting possibility. These are the three things we have. You may taste it. What you like only you take it. Little bit you may lose by giving them to taste. But we will save more like that. So maybe a system in the these institutions where people can taste before they serve. So I think once this once this George, this arm is inside them, we should not waste, it will already begin to happen. We will find the creative ways of avoiding excess serving and wasting. Turn food waste into meals for the poor. Perhaps we can initiate some food. I have seen food buses. I saw it in Brazil. Wonderful program of food bus recording. They collect it and very beautifully, this bus goes from place to place, collect the food, and they have places where people, they are in need, people who live, they go to the bank, people, they don't have place to stay, and the orphanages, they eat. So very well, it's good quality food. It's not what nobody wants, it's good quality. Uh, only we have to make sure what we give is edible and it's good, good enough for ourselves that only we give it. Um, set up a system of donating excess food to charitable organizations or set up food banks. I hear there are some places here. I myself have not come across one and I sincerely hope we can begin in a big way this food bank. And I think, definitely I can speak for us schools, we will be happy people to collaborate in something like that. So that is organized well and uh, together, the more we are united in this, more successful we will be. Donating and distributing excess food will need to be done within the required safety standards. I think sometimes we are very careless in India, other countries are very strict that the kind of food we give must be really, I would say always to people, only what you eat, you will give to your mother, to your family. You may donate for giving to others. Nothing less than that. So this has to be very strong and strictly followed because in our heart of heart, this attitude is in us. Only the very strong commitment, what I eat, only what I will eat, I'll keep. The half-eaten food can, that cannot be donated can easily be composted and used in school gardens or where I saw one place, the local farmers come and collect that and they are doing the composting but school fields they are helping the farmer by giving food, half-eaten food that cannot be donated. Uh, schools can incorporate food recycling into the science curriculum. And it will be a wonderful project sometimes to take up by the science, uh, as a part of science. Uh, use the more enthusiastic and active students as ambassadors for conscientizing the public about the evils of culture of waste and motivate them no for no wasted your food. Imagine if from a Sensarius College, Notre Dame Academy, Sensarius, and say yes, here, there are groups of young children doing drama or doing something, going around, telling people no more wasting of food, no more wasting of water. Believe me, the elders will take notice. The institutions will take notice. So you become ambassadors of a change, a new culture. These are some of the thoughts. I have a lot of things about it in my head. I think there are a lot of possibilities. So to, uh, and to conclude, food waste, uh, 
And as I said, I, I reflected on this many times. When this whole area, uh, idea is also part of my my uh, belief, my values, my attitudes, even the dharma, the religion, because God is compassion, God cares for everyone. So I, as a worshipper of God, I also share what I have with others. So put it in the context. It becomes a very sacred journey. It's not an isolated little good deed. It's a part of who we are. So let us go in hands with people of goodwill around the world who are committed to reaching out to those in need and saving Mother Earth. So all this goes together. Mother Earth is our greatest teacher when it comes to recycling and reusing everything systematically and intelligently. So wonderful to see what dies becomes part of the earth. It is for something else. Nothing is wasted. The natural is, is recycled, reused. It brings out life. She wastes nothing. So, to address the problem of food loss and waste globally, you all are aware with that the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goal number 12, they have a very good phrase there about this. Aims to have as the per capita global food waste at the retail and consumer level and reduce food losses along protection and supply chain. So, we in small groups sitting here, we are discussing this, but at the world level, there is at the UN, the Sustainable Development Goals number 12 addresses this also. So it's a wonderful thing to feel that we are part of a very huge team initiative. Small group as we are is something very important today. Let every school and religious institution become very sensitive to the cries of those who do not have the food they need to live a healthy, dignified life. And also to the cries of the plundered Mother Earth. Together let us pledge to create a new traditions, new habits, new values that are focused on saying no to food and water wastage. Let us dream of a future when every child, every man, every woman in India and all this planet Earth have enough food and water. Everyone is waiting for someone else to take the action to make this come true. Why don't we become that someone? Thank you.